Welcome back to part two of rebuilding the steering clutch and bevel shaft for my cat here. This is, if this is your first time watching, my name is Matt and this here is a 1950 Cat D4 7U. Uh, last video I got the top half here of the bevel shaft apart and this video we're hopefully going to be putting it back together. First step I think is going to be putting a new bearing on here, a new cone bearing that sits right up against this ring gear. And I got the camp stove out, so some of you probably know where this is going. All right, here's a new bearing. Okay, we're below 250 Fahrenheit. So I'm going to drop this in and it's probably going to cool it off pretty quick in here. We'll see. So we'll let it soak for a couple minutes and uh, if, if, if I have to start up the heater, I'm going to pull this up a little bit because you do not want the bearing to sit right on the bottom with a flame on it because it'll get way hotter than the temperature you're going for. So back in my youth, I would uh, use, just use an oven, which is about a hundred times easier. But uh, as I've gotten older, I found that members of my household don't really appreciate it when you uh, heat up oily parts in the oven. All right, this thing's been at temperature for a while now. So I got it uh, ready to go over here. I got this big uh, three inch bar. It's, it's not gonna go on all the way, it never does. So I'll give it a few taps to get it seated once it's on there. This is getting hot oil everywhere. Is this the right way? Yeah. Get out of there. All right. There we go. Okay, it's definitely seated all the way. I'm not sure why it was so hard to get it on that first little, maybe I just set it on there and it wasn't quite straight and then it started heating up the metal, the, the shaft a little bit, I'm not sure. But it just, as you saw, it just shot right down once I hit it a couple times. This is on the right orientation, right? Okay, over here I've uh, pressure washed and uh, painted a lot of the internal drum stuff. This is all in the dry area. I did not paint the stuff that goes in the wet area. So this stuff was actually all factory primed with the, the internal cat primer. But when I degreased it and uh, pressure washed it, that all that primer just shot right off of there. So this is the throw out collar. And if you've seen here, they're blocked up right now. But these passages were completely full of grease all the way through. And it took me a while to realize what they are. These are oi the oiling ports. So you, you put oil in on the top transmission case. I'll show you in a sec and it drips down into these ports and it, and it oils this bearing right here. There's, there's ports all. Anyway, all of these channels were completely, completely full of just grease and dirt. And uh, let me show you the bearing real quick. Here's the bearing right here. It's actually, I mean, it moves. It, it just grinds uh, really badly. It's, not a, it's obviously not good anymore. But uh, yeah, there was, it's just full of grease and dirt. That, that oiling port, so you put oil in right here on these things, and then they, uh, they drip down through here. And then these are the levers that ride over the bevel gear, and they drip in these little cups. I don't know what these are made out of. It's either aluminum or brass or something, or bronze. And then it drops out to there, and it drops into that throw out bearing. Uh, one of these is broken, but I think it, well, I'll find out. Once I put these in, I'll find out if it's, gonna work, but uh, I might have to replace that one. Get this on before I forget. <clears throat> okay, now for this thing. So this thing goes inside of the, the gear case, uh, so I did not paint it or really do much to it. It wasn't grimy like everything else. So I did get a new cone here. Made in Japan, what? So I'm gonna go ahead and take this back to the, uh, the house and throw it in the freezer real quick. And then I'll just drop it in instead of hammering on it. 
Well, that went in really easily. Just drop right in. It's nice and flush. So next up is the seal. Here's the new seal. It's a similar construction. So assuming that goes in like that. I think I'm done with this thing. I don't remember which way orientation this ring goes. It probably doesn't matter, but let me double check that before I put this back on. Yeah, so that ring has the, uh, the painted side facing inward, so I'll do the same thing here. So this oiling tunnel, um, I, I cleaned it out really good on both sides. Uh, only one side's gonna be used, but this is like a symmetrical part. You can use it on either side of the bevel shaft. So anyway, I need to put the new bearing in. This bearing is different on each side. So, um, like if you look at this outer, this outer race here, it's thinner on that side than this side. And then this side right here, the thrust face is, is thicker. So I believe this is supposed to stick out like that. Um, if you look at the old bearing, let me find it real quick. So here's the old bearing here. And in the directions it says, if the inner race says thrust here, which it says you can read it right there barely, then this is facing out towards or in towards the bevel shaft. But if, it's, if the outer race is marked thrust here, which this one is not, then that goes this, this side goes to, towards the steering clutches. So neither of the faces on this bearing are marked, but you can tell right away the dimensions. The inner race right there is the same, where this one said thrust here. So it's supposed to go in like that. And this is a pretty loose fit. I can get it pretty much popped in by hand. So um, I'll just go ahead and uh, tap this in. So I think this went here. And then snap ring, I think. And then this is about done. Is there anything worse than snap rings? Yeah, this snap ring is a, can't really get a tool on here. So do the eyeball gouge method. When it shoots off and shoots you right in the eye. Come on, there we go. Not seated in there very well, is it? So not sitting in the groove. Yeah, that's why they call it the eyeball eyeball gouger. I think this bearing is slightly thicker than the other one because it's not sitting in there deep enough. Okay, here's the problem. So this right here is about. 942 and a half. This is the original bearing and it's 905. So it's about 40 mils thinner. And this thing is so thick that I can't get this. This is like uh, probably to keep the grease or the uh, oil in. I can't get that and the snap ring in. You saw what happened when I tried to force it. So let me think about that for a little bit. All right, so a couple of things. One, this is still doesn't seem to be properly seated in there. Like it is kind of. Um, I called the owner of General Gear, or I, I sent him an email about this, and he measured a couple of these bearings, and they're all the same thickness, which is like forty thousandths thicker than the original. I watched back the original, the video when I took this apart, and I think this ring was on the other way, but both him and the parts manual. Let me grab the parts manual real quick. This ring where the, it, it co domes out towards the center. If, if you look right to the left of my uh, fingernail there, so that's what I have here. And then he also said that that's the correct way to do it. So either, um, either I'm thinking about that wrong or the, when it, it was wrong when I took it apart. And I checked on the other side, the other side of the bevel shaft, that one is also, installed this way so whoever did that i'm pretty sure they put it back together wrong that's why you can't always just trust what uh how it was done originally because you know people can do stuff wrong even even people that aren't me you know i'm wondering if because this thing was installed backwards if maybe the lip of this thing got damaged a little bit and that's why it's not maybe it's not seating on here all the way and that ring that's why that ring can't fit I think maybe the bearing thickness is kind of a red herring. Nothing can go ever go to go together easy. 
Okay, well that was a fight. You might think I'm overthinking this, but I'm pretty sure the last thing you want to happen is this the snap ring to go shooting out into the uh, steering clutch compartment while you're running this machine. So I'm uh, pretty confident it gets seated in there now. So we'll call this good. Go ahead and uh, pre-lube this bearing a little bit. All right, on to the steering clutches. Actually, I just lied because it's the next day. I had some more time to think about this. I also sent a picture of it to the, the guy from General Gear and he confirmed that this is the correct way to install this, this guard right here. So it was definitely installed wrong and it's still installed wrong on the other side. But one other thing that's bugging me and I'll show you, it just didn't really register is that this bearing basically drops right out of here if I can get it to. I think this old one was, was almost definitely spinning in here in this uh, carrier. So what I'm gonna do real quick here is I'm gonna degrease all this and then I'm gonna use some uh, 680 retaining compound, which is designed exactly for this purpose. I just gotta be careful to get it away from the oiling passages here. So I'll put it around here and then maybe right at the bottom. So last time I used this stuff was on the steering clutch bearings for the controls and a lot of people were freaking out in the comments because um, they thought I had blocked up the oiling channel which partly my fault um, I didn't really talk about it but if you watch that video closely you'll see there was tape over the oiling holes and also there's uh, since those were installed on the outer races of the old bearings there's no there's no way to grease them so putting Loctite in the greasing channel is not going to hurt anything on those that was all my own fault though for not really explaining it very well. Oh, is this, oh, it's backwards. Of course it is. Okay, take two with the bearing installed the correct way. Glad I caught that in time. Because once this is in, it's not gonna wanna come out very easily. Okay, so now at least I know it's not gonna spin. The snap ring's not gonna shoot off and this is installed in the correct way. So finally done with this thing. Okay, so uh, this is the outer drum for the steering clutch, and it says to use this as a guide. I'm just, I'm just reading the directions. I did paint this. Once again, this is a dry compartment, so paint shouldn't hurt anything. Now these discs, uh, I got these from General Gear, so the original setup was eight of these and eight steel discs, which are right here. But this new setup is 12, 12, and 12. So these are oil free. And this, this will help align it. Uh-oh. Okay. And then these are all covered in oil. So I'm gonna have to go and wash each of these with a brake cleaner. I'll do it as I put them in. That's probably the best way to do it. Otherwise, they're gonna get dirty when I set them back down. I have the, uh, <laughs> I have the friction disc right there on that, that stool, which is fairly clean. So I don't know, I'll get to washing these down and putting them on. Yeah, so you don't want any oil or grease on this stuff. This would be uh, a lot easier if these weren't covered in oil, but I understand the, the purpose of that. <clears throat> I have uh, about five left. Okay, last one. All right. All right, here's the top part. This is where it's gonna get a little bit difficult because it, uh, you need to flip this whole thing over as, as a unit to install the springs, I think. And so next thing that goes in are the studs. So I, if I remove this, all the uh, discs are gonna get, all the pressure discs are gonna get screwed up. I'm gonna put these here so these studs don't fall out. And then as a unit, I'm gonna have to put this on the press. This is gonna be heavy. Okay. All right, once I get it set on the press, I can take the uh, ratchet strap off. Not too heavy. Okay, same story as before when I took it apart. I'm only going to install uh, four, string, four springs at a time. 
It'll make it a little bit easier. So I'm doing these outer four. These are supposed to fit in here, aren't they? Yeah. Go ahead and put the old safety glasses on for this one. Dang springs. They all through. Mostly. It's always a little hair raising, isn't it? One. Uh oh. Okay, I think they're all in. Let's ease it on up here. Nice. Nothing shot off of there. It's a good sign. So now I just need to rotate it 90 degrees and repeat, and I'll be done. I wonder if this is what disarming a bomb feels like. Okay, I think that's all of them. Get it out and take a look. Everything's lined up. Looking good. Take a look at the other side real quick. Oh, that's that tape still on there. Okay, so I think this goes on first. That spins, it's a good sign. So this thing, uh, I was reading the directions about this. You're supposed to drill where it's tight. So you can see it's drilled on the top and not the bottom. Okay, I got it on as far as I can get it. Uh, so next step is, it says drill 7 30 seconds holes. I'll reuse that hole and then I'll just, yeah, I'll reuse both of these, it might help. So it's nice to be drilling right next to bearings. So I reused these, but there are one, so there's one set and another set here. So this, I think this might mean this is the third time this thing's been rebuilt possibly. Maybe more, but there's, this thing's definitely been drilled three times. Way too much. And I think that's it for this hub. Spins nice. Okay, so let's talk about pressing this thing back on. I need to look up the tonnage. I think it's 10 tons, but it might be 15. So really the only thing to grab onto is right here. And um, Cat has a bunch of uh, adapters and, and such that they recommend. But if you actually look in the book, let me, let me show you real quick. So in the manual here, this is how they have you pushing back on that, that hub. And it's, it's some adapters and uh, it's basically something that screws on to this main, this is the main uh, shaft here, the bevel shaft. So it screws onto that and then it, it goes there. But if you look later in this book, when you press back on it, I'll show you, it's, it's these right here, these drums. Um, which is the exact same nut size, this is the exact same retainer, same shaft diameter, same, same thread pitch. And you're supposed to press those onto 15 tons, where I think it says 15 to 20 for the other one, but that, that 20 number is too high, like I said, it's either, I think it's 10 or 15, I'll have to check. So on this setup, where they're pressing these hubs back on to 15 tons, they say just weld two nuts together and run all thread through it. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. I got, uh, this big, this big nut here, this is the right thread pitch. It's say it's an extreme, it's like a grade nine nut, but once you weld on it, you know, it's all bets are off. And then I think I'm gonna have to put a washer on. And then this is a one inch uh, extreme strength nut. And then I have some one inch all thread kicking around here somewhere. So I can run that through, put the hollow ram through that, and then have it, uh, bottom out on that so, and then, then I have uh, some pipe where I can push down 
and hopefully seat this thing. So that's, that's gonna be the first try here. By the way, this is what I have for the pipe, which is <laughs> cast uh, steel pipe. But you know, I've, I've used stuff like this in presses tons of times and it's, it, it barely fits inside these springs, but it does. And it'll fit perfectly right around that flange and then allow that to come through. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna work. It's all gonna come down to the weld on this nut. So I have a few of these. I can, I can weld it a few times if I screw up on the first one. I have a few, a few chances here. Okay, I'm gonna just try the most simple and basic thing here first. All I've done is I've just kind of ground off the coatings on all those things so there's a better path for the weld. And I'm just gonna use my uh, MIG welder, which is gonna be uh, flux core, gas, no shielding gas, and I'll have it on the highest, uh, highest voltage level. So I get these lined up good, and then I'll just give it a shot, see how it works. Welds are going down pretty good, so this might actually work. Okay, I got the slag off and the, the grossness off. Uh, if I had to guess if this thing was gonna fail, I'm guessing it's gonna fail on this nut. Some of the penetration here. So we'll, we'll find out. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just spray some, some primer over this real quick. So if it does start to crack, cause I have to reuse this thing several times. So if it does start to crack, I can kind of tell, hopefully, if it's starting to, to fall apart when I'm using it. But uh, this, this might actually work. I mean, we're only going up to like what, 10 tons or something like that. Not a lot of force, so we'll find out. Okay, one other thing I gotta do, since this sits over the top like this to retain this nut, I wanna remove the paint from around these bolt holes since kind of my rule of thumb here, I mean, it's, it's an obvious rule of thumb, is whenever you're painting stuff, anytime there's metal on metal, you don't wanna have paint in between. So like in this case, one other spot where I had missed it initially was on the throw out uh, carriage that, where that bearing is. Um, there's a, uh, there's a flange on the other side of this drum that it sits up against, the bearing sits up against. And when I initially installed it a couple days ago, you'll see it on the video, there was paint there. And so I, I took it off and I removed that paint a little bit later when I remembered about it. All right, final two steps here. I, I've already done them both off camera, but the first is the reason this video is probably late is I was waiting for this to come in. This is a one and a half inch by 12 die and I recut these threads. These were getting fairly mushroomed. The, uh, the original nut did fit on here okay, but the one I'm gonna use to force on was not fitting on well. So I recut those. It takes a lot of force to cut those that, uh, uh, threads that big. And then I also dry it off or cleaned up and, and degreased these tapers since they're supposed to be clean and dry to press on the new uh, hub. I looked up the spec and the, the cat spec in the manual is 15 to 20, but um, there's kind of like some uh, tribal knowledge on this that says to use about 10 to 12. Anything more than that and you kind of risk splitting that hub in half as it goes down that tapered shaft. So I'll be doing 10 to 12. I just have this on here to protect shavings from getting in that bearing there. So that's, I'll take that off and then I'll get the hub on and we'll get it set up. <sighs> I don't think there's like a correct orientation here. All right, I did paint this yellow. So when it explodes under tension, the uh, doctors will be able to find all the pieces that are embedded in my face more easily since it's a nice bright color. All right. Let this fit in here somehow. Hopefully this is long enough. It's going to be close. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't use that. Yeah, it's probably best just to do that. All set up here. If I had a guess on what's going to break, it'd be this cast pipe, but also my welds might explode. But I think uh, we'll give it a shot. So we're aiming for three and a half to 4,000 PSI, which is just over 10 tons up to 12 tons. And let's give the dog, come here dog. Let's give the doggy a treat so she's not 
bugging me. She has a knack for running in right when something dangerous happens. And let's give it a shot. All right, here we go. So we are at, where is, what did I say? Uh-oh, dog's moving. Abort. What are you doing, dog? Go back. Did you eat that already? Are you kidding me? All right, gotta hurry. We gotta finish this before she eats another one. So that's 2,000 PSI. 3,000. Thirty-eight, four. So I just want to, I don't really trust that it actually did that much weight. So I just want to check, make sure nothing's stretched out or flattened. I mean, we're not talking about a ton of force here. It's only, I mean, it's not really that much in the grand scheme of things. <clears throat> Nothing seems to be messed up. Is this all thread bent? I don't think there was a washer on here. Might be wrong. This thing spins on so much nicer than it did originally. I got this thing tightened down, but I think I tightened it too much since this lock is just a little bit clocked past it. It's not very easy getting the uh, this thing lined up. You have to get it close, and then you get that tab on, or the, the lock on, and then you can uh, get an impact on it and tighten it to uh, make it fit. Nevertheless, I did get it on. So I think that, it's a terrible angle. I think that is gonna do it for this side. I'm gonna flip it over on some cardboard so I don't scratch up my beautiful paint job. And then I'm gonna wrap the whole thing in plastic. Actually, I should wrap it in plastic first and then flip it over. And then we'll be good to go on the other side. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take off, take the other side apart on this video, just because I know what I'm doing now and it's probably be helpful just to have it all in one video. Once again, this is a dry compartment. These things should not be coated in grease. It's actually drier on this side though. It's kind of a surprise. Someone's been hitting on this thing. All right, I'm hiding behind the engine for this one since it moved. Let's see here. And on. All right, here we go. Let's see what it takes. That was probably 4,500 PSI, so under 15 tons to get that off. Much easier than the other side. Got some leftover seal here. I used a lot of RTV. Bearing surface is pretty, these bearings are pretty bad. And then there's a lot of Rust build up on this thing, which is fine. That'll come off. There's a lot of rust here too. It's just from sitting for so long that rust builds up everywhere probably. But the shaft and this looks okay. So I don't think we have any problems here. So I just wanted to show you, that's why I took this hub off in this video. So you can see this one is also installed backwards, this ring right here. It's supposed to be the other way. Um, uh, when I take it apart, we'll see how uh, how worn it is, but there's a fair amount of play in the new one too. It's just the nature of that bearing. So got a lot of cleaning to do, but uh, go ahead and end the video there. So pressing those hubs back on was so easy with this tool here, which held up really well. 
I guess we'll designate it, uh, it's an adapter, so we'll call it the uh, 5F666 adapter. Um, the, the procedure for pressing those on is very similar to these. These are tapered shafts that go into here, and um, this nut's the same size. This, this is the same thread pitch and diameter. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out and replace the seals while I'm here. Uh, since this same tool I can use and this whole same setup I can use to, to press it back together. One thing I haven't done for a while is update this price wall. So I'm gonna go steady here for a sec so you can see it. We're up to about 5,400 bucks. Obviously this is not including any consumables like RTV, oil, gas, cleaning stuff. Tools even, I'm not including uh, tools that I've purchased in here with the exception of the clutch tool up there since that's like a one-time purpose-built thing. For fasteners, I'm just throwing in 200 bucks for now. I've ordered more than that in fasteners and I've used probably about 5% of the fasteners I've ordered. But uh, that's, that's just a nice round number that is probably gonna be fairly accurate by the time I'm done. And this also includes stuff like the actual dozer cost, how much I, I spent to get it here. So this is, Besides consumables and tools, this is a complete price. So we're up to about 55, 5,400 bucks right now. Not terrible, but there's you know still a little bit more to go here. All right, well that's most of the dangerous stuff out of the way for this one at least. Uh, a couple quick items. I see a lot of YouTube, uh, where YouTube deletes a lot of comments automatically, and I have no control over that. It's anything where people are putting, putting like web addresses or phone numbers or home addresses even. Uh, YouTube automatically deletes that stuff. I see like the first three words of it and then I know it's been deleted and I can't read it at all. So if, uh, you know, if you, if you have something you want to send me information, which is greatly appreciated, um, if you look in the description of any of these videos, my email address, my mailing address, and like my Instagram are in there. So that's how, the best way to get a hold of me. Otherwise, like, I mean, I have no control over what YouTube does. It's just all automatic. All right, so I showed the price wall and I talked about the comments. Um, oh. There's also, if you go to my channel page, there's, and you scroll down, there's like an unlisted video section. And those are just like short ad-free videos. I do updates, I do other random stuff in there. So uh, feel free to check it out if you want. If not, you're not gonna miss much. So I think that's it. Um, with all that said, thanks a lot for watching guys. I really appreciate it. And I will be back hopefully soon.